Uh, we are always delighted to be in a room full of leaders and scholars and business folks who give such great support to the public school system and the community college system and the university system of North Carolina. I'm really pleased to be here today with you and with the IF, uh, with the members of NCA and Sherry, with Bill and the superintendents, with all of you uh, from your different platforms, June Atkinson is here, Howard Lee, and I can go on and on, Trisha, but I want to talk. All of you are so critical to the work we are about in North Carolina. And I fundamentally believe there has never been a more important time in the history of the state for us to have clear goals and measurable outcomes to resonate across the state with citizens, with moms and dads and grandparents and educators about what it is that's important. And you've heard it so well explained. What's important is that the child graduates from high school, career, or college ready. Therefore, we are a competitive state in a global economy. You've got to have that skilled workforce, purely and simply. As a governor who spends a lot of my time on recruiting and growing jobs in North Carolina, I have yet to close a business deal in North Carolina is one of the top five by any metric from one to five around state's economic development prowess in the last two years. We are winning the game in this day. I've yet to close a deal where sometime during the conversation, the CEO or the chairman of the board doesn't say to me, now governor, this is not about the here and now. This is not about the workers that I've met at the community college or at the university. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. Because if a company lays down 50 million, 150 million, four or five hundred million dollars to build a facility to do business here, they want to understand that they can make a profit because that's the way decisions are made in the business sector. And that skilled workforce is clearly the core mission of public schools in North Carolina. I fundamentally believe that regardless, and you believe it too, I'm preaching to the choir, every child, regardless of where they live, what their family income is, what the race or the religious creed might be, every one of the children born in this day have a constitutional right. It's not a gift. It's not something that we want to do because we're nice. It's a constitutional right that they have to a free, public, sound, basic education. That's defined us as a people. That goal, from my perspective, and I would urge you for it to be from your perspective, is the single most important fundamental responsibility. It's core to who we are as a people and what it is that state government does. I'll be very direct with you. No governor in the history of North Carolina has ever walked away from that core responsibility for public education that succeed for every child. And you're looking at one governor who refuses to be the first to set North Carolina's public school system backwards. We need your help. High-performing teachers and really great principals are the key to what makes the difference in our classrooms and in our schools. And I believe we're all saddened by that figure 46. So I've been there and done that before, and I know that we can bring that figure down as resources become more available in our state, and they will become more available. The challenge for us now is not to obsess on that number, but to obsess on what it is that's at risk right now. My goal and your goal for every child to have a chance to succeed starts with the work that you're going to do here this afternoon and that we do every day in our own platforms. What does that mean? What am I talking about? We must continue, as Dr. Harrison said, to improve our high school graduation rate, our college graduation rates. Quite frankly, Martin, we pointed fingers for a long time at the public school system. Well, folks around the country and in North Carolina are now pointing fingers equally at the community college and the university system. They have to have the liberals with uh, college completion as well. But we know clearly in this day that for a child to have a, a chance of success, that child has to have a career skill set or a college prep set that allows he or she to perform. That's why the budget that I submitted to the General Assembly that's in play now in the legislature 
funds every state-supported teacher and teacher assistant in North Carolina right now. Now, you can get rid of low-performing teachers. That's not what this guarantee is about. The guarantee, though, is about the fact that every school system, be it urban or be it rural, will have an adequate number of teachers who are trained and qualified and teacher assistants who are qualified to start school next fall so our kids can leave school ready, set to go on to a life. Uh, that budget defined by education is all about economic development. Jobs and education are clearly hand in glove. They are inextricably tied together by a common purpose. Dr. Harris and I and Ann and Myra, other members of you have the discussion with me, Howard, that we know the outcome of a child's future is dependent upon the strength of the teacher and the principal that that child finds himself or herself with. It absolutely is the foundation that can cripple that child's life. And that's why I believe career, college, ready, set, go is so important, and that's why I believe you're all here today. And I actually think that's why the rest of the talk was funded. Because somehow, in pretty simple, as Bill Harrison says, non-sexy words, we put together an application to the feds that clearly details how we believe an educational system from the very initial moment of touching a child's life must work. What are our four big goals for North Carolina's education agenda? Number one, we really demand, if you don't demand it, you must, great teachers and great principals. We must do that. We have to have change and openness in those processes. Number two, we must continue to revamp our standards and assessments. North Carolina cannot go backward on assessments and standards. We clearly must have measurable metrics that allows us to know how kids and teachers and schools and leaders are performing. And number three then, you have to have data systems, as boring as that may sound. But we have to have data systems that tracks a child's progress from day one through the exit from the system. And finally, and most importantly from my perspective, we have to turn around across the state our low performing schools. And we have to do whatever we have to do to make that happen. Earlier this week, I was with Leslie Winter and some others uh, at an inaugural meeting of the Early Childhood Council. I've charged that advisory council with developing a comprehensive plan for finding new ways to work together with all the different platforms we have around early childhood in North Carolina to make sure, sure that our youngest kids come to school healthy and ready to learn. We all know that that's essential to a productive kindergarten and first year experience. And all of the discussion that's gone around, that's going around these days about Smart Start and More at Four are important discussions to have, but lest we forget North Carolina has in place a model for early childhood education that's revered by every state in America. We have these processes where we do developmental screenings by pediatricians. We have a rating star for daycare. We have the TEACH program for comprehensive work development and childhood learning. Y'all, we're doing a lot of great things around uh, early childhood. And I don't believe there's anybody in North Carolina who wants us to just throw it all away and say, because of finances, we're not going to have any of that. But for us in the public arena, we understand that once you give that child the right start, the rest is up to us. And we have to be sure in every grade level that there's a clear path for those children that they understand that they can graduate from high school career or college ready. And that's what the College Promise does, that you've heard Dr. Harrison reference and others reference, uh, Tony Habit. Tony, thank you for that. The goal of Career to College Promise is pretty simple. That's why I believe that the College Promise, Career to College Promise, will be adopted in this session of the General Assembly because we do want to guarantee that every child has a shot at working, whether it's in a career or whether it's going on to community college or trade school or college completion. And the College Promise makes that happen while a child is in high school.